Well, I am finally back. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been a little while, guys. So, I just came back from my vacation, and it seems like I missed a lot. Literally, the day I'm driving back home, a bombshell article drops. And what I mean this is a bombshell article, there is some good, but there is a lot of bad. And some of the stuff I'm not going to be able to repeat on YouTube because YouTube is very strict with a lot of it. So I am going to link this article in the description down below where you'll be able to take a look at specifics. I really cannot go that much into it other than some of it. I can go through the, the little nicer parts of it, but there are some very sickening things to say the least with this article. So as much as I'm going to be happy with making this video because it is, it is positive, but disgusting, sickening stuff in this article. If you guys do enjoy this video, please be sure to drop a like, subscribe if you're new, the notification bell have it set to all. Be sure to join that almost 100,000 people that have all notifications on for the channel so you don't miss any of my videos discussing Life is Strange, Don't Nod, or Deck 9 games. Let's go for 1,500 likes on this video. Hope you enjoy. So I'm not going to do the full catch up to all the rumors and stuff that's been happening. So if you guys have been keeping up with the channel for the last couple years, especially recently, about not even two months ago, I made a video discussing Life is Strange 4 and a major update we had on the game, basically, that there was a survey and a lot of new information potentially on the sequel where it was rumored to be starring Max Caulfield solving a murder mystery with Chloe dead. Again, I'm not going to go through all that. I'll link the video down in the description so you can go through that because, again, we don't know for certain if that is even going to be the plot. But it's confirmed. Now, before anyone says, like, He's clickbaiting. He's lying. Well, we're going to go flat on simple why this is confirmed now. So IGN yesterday dropped a bombshell article. And again, I cannot repeat some of these words. How hidden blank symbols were the tip of a toxic iceberg at Life is Strange developer Deck 9. Inside the developer of Life is Strange's internal struggles with toxicity, hate speech, crunch, and more. Want to know why the game's confirmed early last year while working on the next entry in the life is strange franchise a few developers at deck nine stumbled upon something that didn't belong in their game blank symbols again i can't say the word if you go look up the article you'll know what i'm talking about but youtube will definitely demonetize this video if i even mention the word and i would never mention that word in my videos or live streams or any of that now in the cusp Meaning this is imminent. I think this summer, potentially right around, remember when True Colors got announced? That was like March. I'm thinking like we're looking, this could potentially be the month or in May. I told you guys this about a month ago that we were, an announcement seemed imminent at this point because it had been two plus years. Deck Nine was definitely working on something. So... Now, we're going to talk about all the bad stuff we'll put it in. Trust me, this is not just a good video, right? Ooh, a new life is strange. But we have to talk about all the bad because, trust me, this is just a... It puts a sour taste in my mouth that we know that a new game is confirmed now. But at the same time, we're going to be going through all this absolute sickening stuff. And now with being on the cusp of announcing that game and struggling to secure other projects, Deck Nine leadership is facing growing internal discontent from those harmed by its inaction. While the developers of Life is Strange love and believe in the series, many of them increasingly struggle to reconcile the values the games promote with the culture in which they are made. So you're probably confused by that. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about this a lot, but an announcement is imminent. That is a positive. You could take that as a yes, a new Life is Strange game is coming. But now we talk about this awful stuff that has been laid out in this article. So weeks after these symbols had been found, management remained silent and staff unrest grew. This wasn't the first time executives had failed to act when marginalized individuals at the studio felt unsafe. According to over a dozen current and former employees across several departments at Deck 9, most of whom spoke to me on a condition of anonymity for fear of reprisal, Deck 9's man management had Deck Nine's management has long let a toxic work culture fester at the studio. They claim the sea suit has protected multiple abusive leaders, encouraged crunch, and allowed bullying of individuals advocating and truly for more authentic representation in Life is Strange. I want to know one of the reasons I love Life is Strange so much is that it is an inclusive game. 
it is one of those games that is not afraid to be inclusive, to include people that usually are marginalized or not represented enough in media. Life of Strange was one of the first games that I played where LGBTQ representation was made, present, it was established, and I have a lot of fans here, a lot of you guys that watch my channel that are LGBTQ, and I always say, I am one of your defenders, I will always be supportive of that, I have a f I have family that are LGBTQ, and I can't tell you guys enough how it means to me to back you guys up, especially when we're hearing stuff like this, it's just sickening, it's disgusting, it shouldn't be happening, but in the gaming industry, it seems like anything is possible at this point with how bad it's been the last couple years. Now, this article is massive. I'm not going to be able to go through everything because there's so much stuff. But we're going to go through some of the main points. So, Deck Nine's first crack at Square Enix's popular narrative series involves significant crunch. And while efforts were made to improve workloads on True Colors, over time, never fully vanished. One anonymous individual told me they worked 70 to 80 hours a week for an entire month surround True Colors. Under the scribe, taking on weeks of crunch to protect other team members, saying it was never mandated, but that there was always too much to get done in the allotted time. This is just mainly talking about the crunch culture, and we're not even going into those hateful symbols or any of that stuff so that's just another thing like this is just a like a triple whammy you've got employees that are being overworked you've got these symbols that shouldn't be in your game and you've got a seems like a toxic relationship between deck nine and square enix much of the crunch say was a result of a relationship between deck nine and square enix remember originally it was don't nod and square enix remember don't nod basically I think there was discontent between Don't Nod and Square Enix, and Don't Nod just said, F it, we're leaving, we're gonna go do our own thing, and right now we've got Lost Records, Bloom and Rage coming, which is basically their new Life is Strange. Several people told me it felt as though Square Enix had sold Life is Strange to the lowest bidder, and that this was frequently reflected in production schedules with tight deadlines and small budgets. Multiple people were aware of producers being forced by their bosses and Square Enix to rework production schedules, so it looked like every milestone fit within a very limited development time frame. Despite their arguments that it was impossible, one called Square Enix, and specifically Square Enix London, who Deck9 worked with directly, bullies. I mean, this this is so disappointing for me because I love this series. I love Deck Nine. I mean, I don't, I'm not the biggest fan of Square Enix, but they've you know they've not been like bad, bad. But now reading all this, it's like, what the actual hell is going on behind the scenes? Another source elaborated: Square always put a lot of pressure on our people, so the toxicity started to bleed into our environment too. Others I spoke to expressed frustration at Square Enix for a different reason. It was far too hands-on with the script. Sure, Life is Strange is a Square Enix owned IP, but sources told me Square Enix seemed oddly reluctant or outright hostile to the diverse themes and ideas and themes that Life is Strange fans love. Well, now you guys might have an idea why Don't Nod just said, we're done. Now I think I start to understand things a little more clearly because you already knew there was kind of already discontent like Michelle Koch, who was one of the heads at Don't Nod, he still is. He basically talked about this kind of like some kind of like difference between them and Deck Nine. Never really want into, I don't feel like he never went into specifics, but now you're starting to see that maybe a little bit in this article why there was something awry. For instance, multiple people recalled an incident during True Colors development where Square Enix told multiple developers it didn't want Life is Strange to be thought of as a gay game. And again, this is a touchy subject, and I know people are going to say what they want on certain things. It's woke! Da -da -da. Like, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that BS. Life is Strange always, to me, is, you know, LGBTQ representation, gay, whatever you want to call it. It has always been a part of the game. It's not been the main, main thing of it, right? But it has always been a central part of a Life is Strange game. And I don't have any issues with it. I know other people are going to have issues with it, whatever. I don't care about that people complaining about it being woke or whatever that they don't want to see two girls kiss or two guys kiss we don't care like i am supportive of that so if they want to do that awesome but square enix didn't seem to want that so respect for square enix goes way down hearing this fraud is the relationship with square enix was some people i spoke to deck nine laid the blame for the difficult relationship not at the feet of the publisher but deck nine management they said the managers at deck nine never seemed willing to ask square enix for more time or pushback on notes the developers disagreed with how then was square enix even supposed to know the studio was struggling 
Multiple sources gave the impression in our conversation that Deck Nine's relationship with Square Enix for Life of Strange was largely one of convenience rather than any deep appreciation for the series. Square Enix liked that Deck Nine was willing to do the game for a lower budget than other studios, and it had StoryForge tool, which was made for narrative adventure games. Deck Nine, for its part, needed a good IP to pair with StoryForge. Telltale already had rights to many of the most appealing ones, and other large licenses weren't willing to work with an untested studio. However, many developers told me Deck Nine's management seemed unprepared for dealing with a game with serious themes, especially when it comes to thoughtful portrayals of diverse individuals. Alongside complaints of low pay, difficulty getting promotions, and aforementioned crunch, many people I spoke to expressed frustration that management allowed numerous instances of toxic behavior to go unaddressed for months to end. These include a number of accounts of sexual harassment, bullying, transphobia, and otherwise toxic work culture that multiple individuals corroborated. In just one example, multiple people remembered a senior programmer who frequently made sexist remarks and crude jokes with both racial and sexual overtones. One person recalled him repeatedly harassing a young female producer, frequently speaking over her, invading her personal space, and blocking her from grabbing items. He also frequently screamed and swore at other junior programmers sitting near him. One anonymous source with insight into leadership decisions recalled management fighting to keep the programmer despite numerous reports opting to move his team to desk far away from other departments so others couldn't hear him yelling. He was eventually let go not long after an incident where sources recalled him overhearing him screaming at an HR representative. Every woman I spoke to for this piece had at least one story of being treated poorly or harassed during their time there, and almost all said they felt they had to fight exceptionally hard to receive raises or promotions. We usually treated as a marketing or PR asset. That's how higher ups often talked about us, said Madeline Tate, a former producer at Deck Nine Life of Strange. Every promotion where a woman got promoted took a team effort. Everyone's suggesting them, sending emails, both men and women, dozens just trying to get them promoted. I mean, guys, I I'm at a loss of words. We haven't even gotten into the really, really, really bad stuff. And this is ridiculous. I mean, <sighs> I love Deck Nine. I love Life is Strange. But what the actual hell is this? What am I reading here? This is sick. Now, there's another section of this article that goes over an individual by the name of Zach Garris. He has worked on... True Colors, Before the Storm, even The Expanse, he'd worked for Telltale for a bit. And, again, this will, if I go through everything that has been laid out here, this will, video will go 30 minutes long. What I will say about this man, based on what he has been, again, accused of, and, again, he was eventually, he left on his own accord, meaning probably not a good sign. He had his own little statement, and I'll have you guys go read that. It is in the section titled true colors again this guy seems like a scumbag and again don't want to get too much into it but a lot of this stuff is just sickening like i just really don't want to go through it it, it would be youtube would probably take me down because a lot of the things he is being accused of is really bad really bad stuff so I love you guys read it, but yeah, Zach Garris, uh, thankfully he is not at Deck 9 anymore by the looks of it, and I believe Telltale removed him as well. I don't know exactly where he is right now, but he did provide a statement, and you guys can go through that, but again, not, not, not a good look at all. No. Now, near the end of 2022, as management was fighting to bring back Garris, someone noticed something odd in the development of the new Life is Strange game. It was an in-game sign that incorporated the word, can't say it, it would seem to be a reference to a blank, can't say that. The individual flagged the asset as problematic and was reassured at the time that it would be changed. And again, I'm not going to go through everything in this article because there's a lot of bad stuff in it, but supposedly a few months later they found more stuff to it and eventually kind of was brought up to the heads about what's going on. So at the end of August, after numerous reports of hate speech, management finally addressed the asset in a message posted in Slack. CEO Mark Lyons informed staff that it had removed the symbols and investigated how they came to be there. Lyons claimed that following the investigation, management determined that it was not an intentional action. Regardless of intent, we will not tolerate any form of hate speech in the games. It doesn't matter if we 
accidentally put such symbols in the game, unaware of their meaning if some segment or audience perceived them to be exposing hate speech. In response, Lions announced the company would be instituting an anti-hate speech policy internal page outlining what such symbols entail, communicating a process for investigating further instances of hate speech and creating a mandatory annual training course to where is awareness of hate speech with the goal of preventing it from appearing in games. The message was met with mixed responses, with some employees asking for more information, some expressing gratitude, and others appearing defensive or even mocking. And to basically sum this up, basically they announced that they would look into the incident further, uh, they hired a Denver-based firm, a investigation law group, looking at the situation, and no further information had been given to employees about the investigation when entitled or its results. Additionally, current employees said none of Lyons' promises of anti-hate speech policies, training, or process have yet been implemented. So again, just overall, again, there's a lot I'm leaving out because a lot of it is not, 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 not going to be able to be said on YouTube, or this will be taken down. So I try to keep that as you know, PG friendly as I can, but at the same time, I feel like you guys need to go click this article, links down below in the description, you can go read it, and make your own opinions and thoughts. Like I said, I'm just sickened by this, and I don't know, I've lost a lot of respect for Deck Nine and Square Enix, and I don't know if they'll be able to, you know, even with a new game coming, this is gonna definitely be something that is gonna put a sour taste in my mouth, just uh, going into that. So one of the other things that we're going to be discussing in the next video is funding. Now, if we remember, Deck Nine has had two rounds of job cuts. One in with last year, and then one, I believe, about a month ago. And this is with The Walking Dead. I never would have thought I'd say this to this day, but in the next video, I will be discussing the sequel to The Walking Dead Season 4, that was supposed to be done by Deck Nine Games. And you never would have thought, I never would have thought. I had a feeling Skybound might be starting to maybe get the wheels turning on a potential sequel, but Deck Nine would have been working on it. And trust me, I have a lot of thoughts on that, so stay tuned for that. And also some stuff with Telltale Games and The Wolf Among Us. We'll get to that in the next video. Now, Deck Nine did post a response to this inquiry uh, at the end of this, so... Um, if you want to take a look at what they said, it's a long, long statement, and again, just, it does seem though, uh, things are not looking so good though. And now, based on what they said at the end of the article here, Deck 9 is now just over half the size it was a few years ago during the height of True Colors. Leadership took pay, cu pay cuts, but impacted the staff only received two weeks severance, pay regardless of time served at the studio. This leaves those remaining at Tech 9 once again relying on Life is Strange. So again, it is a... I'm not saying Deck 9 as a studio is in major trouble, but I hate to say after what I've read, you know, I can't say they didn't deserve it. Like, it just seems like a lot of bad blood. And I'm like I said, they're going to be almost in a similar spot as Telltale, where they're going to have to make sure light, this next Life is Strange game is a certified banger if they want to get themselves back on a stable playing field because it seems like now with you know multiple projects cut from them and other stuff it seems like they're in trouble now so now for now sources say development on the current project so this new life is strange game is progressing well despite some early struggles for better or worse deck nine has become the steward of life is strange and their fates are in extricably linked. In order for the studio to survive, developers say studio leadership needs to rebuild trust, especially from the developers advocating for the diverse and empathetic stories that have been a beloved hallmark of Life is Strange since its inception. I worry that True Colors and Before the Storm are important to the queer community, and I just worry people will think that they can't play these anymore, Tate said. But every good thing we got in those stories was fought for hard by female writers and queer writers, and games aren't made by one person. If you're marginalized, you have to love games so much to make them, because you have to put up with so much more blank. And shout out to Rebecca Valentine, a senior reporter for IGN who ended up doing this. So again, all the stuff with Deck Nine and Telltale and Skybound we'll be talking about in my next video. But overall, guys, a new Life of Strange game is coming. We are on the cusp of a reveal. Clearly, everything I've told you in this video definitely sheds a different light on this game. Despite, you know, the hatred symbols and all that being removed, 
you know, maybe their crunch culture being fixed a little bit. It definitely, definitely puts a microscope on this and definitely makes me very worried and very angry at a lot of people. So let me know what you guys think about this down below in the comments. This is a lot and I didn't even go through all of it because like I said, this would be about a 40 minute video and I might be, again, if I showed everything and talked about every specific detail, I'd probably be taken down for this because there's just a lot of stuff that YouTube does not like you discussing. So a lot of people asked me to talk about this. Hope I gave you kind of a good summary of it. Again, go check the article link down in the description if you want to know all the details and everything. But let me know your thoughts down below in the comments about this. Clearly, a lot to say the least. So, drop a like and subscribe if you guys did enjoy this. Let's go for 1,500 likes. And again, I'm hoping that Deck 9 is going on a path up because right now they look like they're cooked. And my respect for them and Square Enix is just gone down 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 so this is not the way i wanted to find out we were getting a new life of strange game but it's 2024 i'm honestly i hate to say this i'm not surprised with how bad the gaming industry has been at certain times these last couple of years so thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video peace and love and have a great day Bye bye